difference between the water based mm -hmm. water extracted CBD and the well normal CBD. Let's say this way, because the well actually I'm also the scientist and the based on my knowledge I don't really see so much of the pharmacological difference or the physiological difference between the organic or the normal one, for example. And the also also for the water stuff, I, I honestly, I didn't really test it for your water extracted CBD yet, but the, what is the difference actually? The, what can be the difference for the molecule base? From your perspective, um, pharmacologically, I would probably go so far as to say there isn't a difference. Like I, do, I, are, I, I do agree yeah. with you, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna, blow smoke by any means. No, I, I don't think pharmacologically there is a difference. I think when you think about USDA certification and why it's interesting that we do it from water, um, it's more of a supply chain comfort thing. Like, you know that you're buying a product that's been treating the world the correct way. Right. Um, and then we we have other advantages that we're, we're proud of and we'll probably try to certify in some way that people you know can look at it and say it's more environmentally friendly or more sustainable as a production method so it's it's more about that stuff right um than it is if i take a gram of this versus a gram of that right it, it's awfully similar um yeah. but you know we um Had comparison recently we use like 80 percent of power consumption of normal processing methods mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's more on that side of things um right for you if it, you if you put them both into a rat model it's the same <laughs> and your safety and your safety as well right I you don't so. have to worry about explosion or anything you don't need any oh, you know you yeah, don't use yeah. anything you know danger dangerous you know yeah me and my employees are obviously safer um i think you know, there is a consumer safety aspect in the sense that like, you know, it hasn't touched anything that's going to be bad for you, but um, normal processors can get, they can get the pentane or whatever it is that they use. They can get it out, but you know, with our process, it's never touched that. Right. Uh, but, but yeah, from the pharmacological perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. <laughs> So actually, actually, I've seen for your processes. Well, I didn't really see so much about your processes, but because it's 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 patent, right? It's not, it's still under the the submission to the patent. So they was I couldn't really see so much of the detailed, really detailed how to do it yet. But the I just thought like uh, if that is as because of the CBD is well, it's hydrophobic, right? It's super Correct. duper hydrophobic. So the, I just thought like the. Water extraction means like a, it's the it's like a picking up of the not the water soluble content, but rather like a taking other not the residue, but I don't want I don't want to say it's a residue, but it like a picking up of the hydrophobic residues out from the those extracts. Is it yes or not? I have to tiptoe around that a little bit because um, if you've had any organic chemistry in your background, right. which I assume you have, um, it's actually a pretty I'm very proud of it. It's clever, but it's a pretty simple trick. Um, right. But yeah, like um, we, how do I answer that really? Um, you're right. It is very hydrophobic. Phobic. And so for me and my process, it takes me 500 gallons of water to do oh, yeah. what someone could do in a 10 gallon reactor with, with, uh, with pentane. So. so Got it. So like a pulling out those um, hydroxyl, just like a pulling those two pieces of the hydroxyl bonds on the the uh, CBD using uh, tons or even more of the waters, just like that. Kind of. Uh, to a good enough approximation that uh, we haven't given anything away. Yeah, exactly. It's it's it's. To let them you have to overpower it with tons of water. Tell us about the uh, the crystallization process. What whatever you can tell us without it, you know, putting you at risk. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Chiro asked me a little bit about it earlier. Um, I, it's it's different from what other people are doing in the non-organic space in that it's super dilute. I have to use so much more liquid than they do, but I also don't really care because it's water. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, there's not a safety issue associated with it. Um, I just, you know, I guess high level and Chihiro will probably correct me at some point but oh, like, I, I, just, I just had a, I just popped up one pop one question popped up right now that the if those waters are reusable or not oh that's a good question yeah yeah um I've proved it out I had to rent a system to do it so I, yeah. I don't I don't do it now every, every, with every run but um that's the very next piece of equipment I'm purchasing. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, it, I think so. I can, I, I can definitely recycle it. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't know about the monetary value, but the there's interesting stuff in the concentrate of what can't be recycled. Um, locally, actually, near our facility is a big uh, straw pulping plant. They, they mm -hmm. make pulp from straw waste and they concentrate a solution of those big biopolymers too. And you can use it for dust suppression uh, mm -hmm. on roads. Like there's there's a lot of interesting ways you can use the byproducts of my process. Um, but when you have a straw pulping plant that's on the scale they're on, there's no not a lot of reason for using my hemp ones. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I can recycle for sure. Um, How much is the water bill right now? I mean, you don't have to answer it. The water much, bill. <laughs> oh, it's it's not bad at all. Um, it's not bad. Okay. Oregon or Washington, it's cheap. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, that's if, you think, right. if you think about it, like a thousand gallons a week is a blip on the radar relative to the wineries and stuff around me. It's oh not, yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know that the CBD market demands me to even have a big water bill. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> but yeah, um, I don't know. Crystallization is, uh, if you have a, I don't know, something of sufficient purity, it'll self-organized into an organized structure where the CBD molecules like stack on each other. Um, so how, how is that beneficial? Um, I happen to get into the, in this water situation, I, I get that to happen and it's, it's selective. So any other minor cannabinoids go out with the water, which is definitely, um, Another place I want to expand my research is how do I get those guys? But um, you know, I uh, I got a lot of plans, so to speak. <laughs> uh, yeah, trying good. to decide which is most important. <laughs> that sounds you're interesting. Losing, you're losing the minor cannabinoids with the water, but the THC also goes out with the water, right? That's how you make well, sure there's is, no THC. I, in, in this context, I'm talking about THC as a minor cannabinoid. Because it's it's in the hemp extract, it is a minor cannabinoid. Yeah. I, I I just meant it in that context. So yeah, um, it's also the extraction itself is a little bit selective. So um, I leave behind a higher percentage of THC in the plant material than CBD. Um, it's not completely selective, but it makes the crystallization job easier. Right. And then, the you know, can you explain how the uh, crystallization process basically ensures there is no THC just by the nature of it being crystallization? Yeah, yeah. I mean, even even with um, hydrocarbon crystallization, the crystals themselves are that's that's a selective process. CBD molecules only stack with CBD molecules, so. In any of these cases, if you end up with THC left in your product, it's actually more of the mother liquor getting trapped in the crystals or you did a poor job washing. And in my case, um, there's so little THC in that 500 gallons that, mm -hmm. that there's just not a meaningful amount that can get trapped in my product. 
Um, so that's that's the benefit of dilute crystallizations is that um, the concentration of contaminants in the in the liquid you do trap it's really low. Um, so you, so you know if someone wanted to use 500 gallons of pentane to do their crystallizations they would probably um, burn their building down. But True. if they didn't if they didn't <laughs> they would um, probably see that they also didn't have much THC left in their product. So that's always the balance is. Yeah, because he's using so much water to crystallize in, the that volume of water dilutes the residual unwanted uh. cannabinoids. And so when that water gets trapped in the crystal, there's not, there's way, way less of those non-target cannabinoids than what there would be in a pentane wash because there's only one fiftieth the amount of dilution going on. Um, <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, my extraction's a little bit selective too. So, yeah, uh, even better. Yeah, it's even better. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay.